Hello and welcome. My name is Morgan Ritchie Baum and I am the business and nonprofit librarian with Greensboro Public Library. And as part of the library celebration of Black History Month, we wanted to take this opportunity to highlight black owned businesses in our area. And today I am so very excited to be joined by my good friend, Mona Lisa McCorkle, owner of School of Thought LLC. Mona Lisa, welcome and thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. So Mona Lisa, to start us off, please tell us all about your business. Um, as Morgan mentioned, um, the name of the business is School of Thought LLC because greatness begins with a thought. Um, and actually we provide consulting, we provide training, we provide workshop facilitation, program development, those types of things, coaching and mentoring as well. And I am just excited. Um, I have some eBooks that will be going on sale or will be on sale. And, and just lots of things that I've been sitting on and I've been doing to some degree for a good while now. But now I feel like I'm just in my direct place and path of purpose and it's time to move forward. I love it. So, so let's talk a little bit about what inspired you to start this business. It sounds like you do so many wonderful things with your business. So where did all that inspiration come from? It, it's funny because as I had been going about, I've never really put all the things together. And as I sat down and kind of tried to piece things together, you know, my father was an entrepreneur. That's what we grew up with. My father was a self-employed general contractor and he had four girls, no boys. And so I can remember him during the summer sometimes would take us with him to one of his job sites and I was no good with that. Um, but in any event, I saw his hustle, I saw his grind, I saw his commitment and his dedication. So that's what we grew up with. And I also think when it comes to entrepreneurship, it requires a certain mindset. And of course, you know, many of us, you know, most often people work for, have other jobs or positions or whatever the case may be. So they may be part-time entrepreneurs or go into business fully, um, whatever it might look like, but there needs to be a particular mindset when you take on the entrepreneurial role. Okay. And so one of the things, I guess, I thought about this as well, over the course of my life, the last several years, I've started a lot of things. It's just how I'm built is what I'm purposed to do. I've, I had a nonprofit organization that I thoroughly loved um, in Virginia back starting in 2007. And it actually, we had a couple of suites and we provided services for returning citizens, females. Um, and so I so loved that. So I've done that. I founded churches. I've had a couple of other businesses. So it's honestly, it's just who I am. It's in my DNA. I'm the oldest girl um, of four girls in the family, and we're all entrepreneurs. It's all in our blood. So I'm just, I'm excited about that and, and just how even as we, we're, we've grown older, we've realized what our purpose is. And so we're now, we've made strides or taken strides to do that thing. And I think what brought me to the place that I am, actually I founded School of Thought. I began it in 2015 when I was still living in Richmond, Virginia. And one of my most favorite positions that I held was with the Virginia Department of Corrections Academy for Staff Development. I was hired there initially as a trainer. And when I started doing that and I, I just saw the effect that it had on people and the impact that it was able to make, I knew that I had found my niche. It was phenomenal. And then later I was promoted to supervisor and just, just the, the teamwork, the, the creativity that flowed the impartation and the impact that there was on people. And so I knew what I was supposed to do. So along those entrepreneurial roles, I'd set that up, but then I moved to North Carolina in 2016. And then that's when, you know, I just switched it over to, to North Carolina and I've been moving forward with that. So I'm, I'm excited. I'm always excited, but I I'm, love I'm it. excited about <laughs> what has taken place and what shall continue to take place. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's so inspiring, Mona Lisa. And I love how you tied it back to your family because, you know, we're talking a lot this Black History Month. Uh, we're talking a lot about the Black family. So mm -hmm. I wonder how you view your business and the impact it's had on your family, but mm -hmm. also how you think about your legacy and your family's legacy. I think again, I go back, my father was one, I think my father had a third grade education and he worked hard. 
And like I said, he instilled hard work. You know, he and, he and our mom both, but hard work, integrity. And one of the things that, that our mom used to always say, your word is your bond. Hmm. If you say it, do it. And so I think with all of those things, not only a good work ethic, but it goes a long way for reputation, for character. And that's something that must not only get you in the door, but it must sustain you as well in business. And so even in doing business as an entrepreneur, um, you know, those are the things that I bring with me. But also when I look at legacy and family, again, it's, it's amazing because, you know, my daughter's an entrepreneur. My oldest niece, who's 23, is an entrepreneur. And so they've seen us do these things um, and, and then not put limits on. Yes, you may be working a job or working a career or doing something, but whatever this gift or this passion is that you have on the inside, don't be afraid to just, just do it. Just do it. And so, and then even for, for our grandchildren, you know, for every, I believe in legacy and I want their, you know, a good name goes a long way. But also, you know, we talk about a good name in business. Ultimately, we want to have some money left behind as well. And, you know, and I think about, you know, our oldest grandson, he's 10 years old right now. And, you know, he'll come into my office when he's here visiting sometimes or he'll see me doing things. So I want him, I want this to be instilled or doing something, but that you have the ability, you have the freedom and even the responsibility to, to operate in what you were purposed to do and not to let anyone cause you to be held hostage. So I think the liberty that comes with entrepreneurship is one of the things that I will really want to pass just, just to be free to be who you are and do what you're called to do. That's amazing. Thank you for sharing that, Mona Lisa. So you've shared some advice already that you've received that sounds like it was really impactful, like what your mother said. Um, so what are some other important bits or pieces of advice that's been really impactful on how you view yourself as an entrepreneur and how you run your business? Well, I think one of the things is, and as an entrepreneur, it's different. You know, when you are accustomed to going to work for someone else every day, and of course you have a position description, you know what you're supposed to do, and it's kind of guided. But when you become an entrepreneur, it is so important that you put in just as much time to get yourself going. And we've been so accustomed to of course, being paid by someone else and we've gotten comfortable with that, we get that check. But as an entrepreneur, when you're looking for the big payback or the payout, you know, you have to put the hustle and you have to do the work. And I'll be one of the first to say, you know, with School of Thought, I've done some things here and there. And it wasn't until over the last few months that I fully committed to doing everything and putting more time, putting more time into it because I realized that I believe in work-life balance. I firmly do. And so being the leader of a ministry, um, working full time, trying to do a business, trying to be a good wife, mother, grandma, all of these things, um, there comes a time when you have to say, okay, wait a minute, wait a minute. If I'm going to do something well, I'm going to have to bring it in. And then of course I pray about everything. And so with that, just kind of prayerfully seeking what I should be doing now in this point of my life. And so it just led to this. And, you know, I was so excited I had been one of those who was just vehemently opposed to virtual anything. Wasn't trying to do it, wasn't trying to do anything. And so when COVID came around and I was forced to do training, when I was forced to do ministry, when I was forced to do my whole life um, via Zoom, then it kind of shifted my mindset. It shifted my thinking. And so, you know, back in December, I did my first virtual school of thought training which previously I was doing in-person things. And so to take that virtually and then have people, you know, oh, they actually wanted to be here. They actually wanted to participate. They actually paid to come. And so it's kind of, it's been an adjustment, um, but um, I'm liking it now. Good, oh, that's so I'm awesome. Liking it now. <laughs> I, and, and then also with COVID, it has allowed the time to be able to just kind of sit back, um, stand still and kind of, Think about your next steps or how things should be done. And even for the time when that creative flow has been maybe kind of stunted because of so many other things going on, this time, the time that we had at home gave me some time to kind of look, you know, just, I, I couldn't go anywhere. 
<laughs> so, you know, I was a captive audience right here. And so I'm grateful for that. So it kind of gave me some time to do some things. So I'm excited about that. That's so awesome. So wrapping up, Mona Lisa, are there any last little bits, words of wisdom, resources, or bits of advice you'd like to share with our viewers? Um, wrapping it up, words of wisdom, advice. Well, when I came here, I actually legally formed School of Thought in Virginia in 2017. And I will also add that I am a North Carolina Hub certified vendor. I am also a Virginia SWAM certified vendor. And so I had begun to do that, those things when I came here. And I happened upon someone who told me about the YWCA's Passion to Purse program. And I got in like by the skin of my teeth. Um, and at the very end, and went through that program and really, really loved it. Learned a lot um, about my business and just moving forward with that. Little did I know that a little over a year later, I would be asked to, to lead that program and to facilitate the program. And so with, I believe, I don't think there's anything that is just happenstance in life. Everything is a strategic setup. And so I'm so grateful for that because even with that, I am grateful for what I have been able to pour into other young entrepreneurs um, to kind of push them. Um, I, I'm one of those, I'm a pusher because I want to see people succeed. I want to see people succeed. I don't take no for an answer. And so I push, push, push. And so I am grateful for the, the people who have come through the program while I was there, um, who are being successful, who are continuing to move, who are continuing to grow. And I'm grateful, but even with that, um, just just knowledge strengthened um, or increased for myself. Morgan, I get I met you, which was just a, an absolute blessing to my whole life, honestly. And again, you know, I've even shared with people since just the, the knowledge you have and that you're such a personal but engaging and helpful person. And so for the Greensboro Public Library, there's a there is a gem there. <laughs> and for anyone who actually who is doing even nonprofit work, small business formation, any of those things, you are the bomb. And I'm so grateful for you. Honestly, I don't, I don't but, you know, and honestly, I don't, you know, and just even for words of wisdom, I think the first virtual class that I did was called Starting Now. And so many times we procrastinate. There's always a reason or an excuse for us not to do a thing. And we'll say, well, I don't have the money. Oh, I don't have the time right now. But guess what? If you will stop procrastinating and just start now, start with what you have, start with what you know, write it down. Write it down, write the vision, make it plain. You've got to write it down. And then once you begin to write it down and you know, to begin with, even if you're working full-time somewhere else, if you spend 15, 20 minutes you know, every day, every night, just crafting something, you know, that's not to say you're not starting. You are starting because you are no longer procrastinating and you are now taking your life into your own hand and you're about to make some things happen. And so, you know, how do we eat an elephant one bite at a time? And so you just take the step, start now, keep moving, no more excuses. Everything that you need to start what you were purposed to do, you were born with it. So stop making excuses. You were built for this. And so just go. Just go, if this is February, that this is airing. So we've already had one month of January before us. And so now we find ourselves in February. So if you're someone who should be an entrepreneur, call yourself an entrepreneur, wanna be an entrepreneur, start now, start now. I love you've it. Lived, you've <laughs> lived life thus far and guess what? It's gonna get even better when you fully operate in your purpose and do, do that entrepreneurial thing that you've been purposed to do make some money as well. Yes. Oh, that's awesome, Mona Lisa. So I wanted to finish by just tell us, Mona Lisa, where can we find out more about you and your business? Let's see. The web page is www.schoolofthoughtllc-nc.com. And you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram at School of Thought LLC. And you can also check me out on Payhip because that is where I typically will have my coursework or eBooks listed for purchase and for registry. And that is www.payhip.com slash school of thought LLC. 
Awesome. Mona Lisa, thank you so much for sharing your wisdom, your experience with us. We greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much. And I've thoroughly enjoyed it. All right. Well,